Peronia Central School Board of Education meeting for March 26, uh, 2019. Thanks everyone for being here. We always begin with a pledge to the flag, so if everyone would be so kind as to stand and salute the flag. And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate that. And so um, we have uh, a proposed agenda, and so we need to approve that uh, for our meeting tonight. And it's going to include the adoption of a consent agenda for line items uh, Roman numeral six, all of personnel, and uh, new business Roman numeral seven, up to uh, and through B1. Uh, and then uh, we're going to take the remainder of that uh, separate and apart, but in order of what we're going to be doing. Also, what I'd like to propose to... Sorry, <clears throat> I think that's not quite right. I think B through I. Oh, it's sorry. Part of the oh, okay. Yeah, okay, thanks. B through I. And A is not. Okay, A is treated separate. separate. Okay, and apart. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Ms. Daniels. I really appreciate that. And then, um, <laughs> what I'd ask the board, we do have uh, two uh, guests here tonight. Um, Mr. Paschke has uh, Ms. Lavelle, uh, Connie Lavelle from the Arts Department, and Ms. Farrow has Susan Hentz, uh, a consultant with us as well. Uh, the point <laughs> would be uh, to put uh, those folks <coughs> up. Uh, with their presentations, uh, Ms. Lavelle first, if we could, right after we hear from the public, if the board would be okay with that. Excellent. And so then, relative to the uh, consent agenda, just so everyone's aware, adoption of the consent agenda upon a motion and a second and an affirmative vote by members present approves each and every item so designated. However, prior to the adoption of the consent agenda, any board member may remove any item from the consent agenda. This item will then uh, come up for discussion as part of our regular agenda. And the purpose of the consent agenda is to expedite routine matters so that the board has more time to deal with uh, the substantive things that we've identified. So uh, I guess with that, is there anything else under uh, either uh, Roman numeral six personnel or what we haven't already separated out of new business? Anybody wish to draw anything else out and treat something? <clears throat> Nothing then. Excellent. So if we could have a motion relative to that and the consent agenda, I guess, provided. Ms. Gagachatz and a second by uh, Ms. Paul Fortna. Okay, and uh, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? Okay, we have an agenda. And so uh, this is uh, Roman numeral three then. And in case you need an agenda, there are agendas at the back of the room. Uh, Roman numeral three is to hear from the public. The board's reserved this time to hear comments from the audience. Those wishing to address the board are asked to stand, give their name and address, limit their comments to five minutes or less per individual or group. Concerns and comments during this session should be taken directly or directly related to items listed on the approved agenda for this meeting. meeting. Audience members seeking a response should complete a board correspondence sheet, which is also at the back of the uh, library. And uh, with that completed, you can provide that to uh, Ms. Slagle, our district clerk and board clerk. <coughs> and uh, I would mention just that at or near the conclusion of our uh, meeting tonight, there is a uh, second opportunity to address the board. And that can be on any item, uh, any issue, frankly. Um, and again, uh, if you do have a question, though, uh, we would ask you to complete uh, that form for that purpose as well. So given that, is there anyone who wishes to address the board on any item relative to our approved agenda? 
Yeah. Please. Uh, Andy Lovett, 30 Ryan, please. Um, I'd like to speak to the consent agenda and some of the other practices that the board has put into place that seem to be discouraging you know, public comment and questions. Um, the, the agenda, uh, the consent agenda, we've seen a number of times when people have come to speak about things that are uh, on the agenda and they've already been approved. And you yourself just got a little confused about what you were going to pass forward and, and bring back on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other practice is, is making people wait until the end of the meeting to ask questions that don't pertain to the board uh, minutes uh, or the board agenda for the evening. Uh, for example, you know, I had some questions about uh, ROTC. I waited uh, till the end of the meeting. I asked, sit down, and then uh, I don't get a response, but then there's a little roundtable discussion at the end of the meeting, which then I can't ask about because you've already had the public portion, and if I want to ask about it again, and it's not on the next agenda, I have to wait until the following agenda. Uh, some other practices, uh, you change the order of the agenda around to hear guest speakers, and then you encourage them to leave. Uh, rather than have them stay for the whole agenda. And, and it seems to me uh, that it, it's almost as though the board wants to hear what they want to hear, but they don't want to hear things that they don't want to hear. And then, you know, by telling people it's okay to go after you give your presentation, it kind of says that the rest of the board meeting is not important. And so the people that want to speak have to sit through the whole board meeting. If they want to ask about something that's not on the agenda, they have to sit through the whole board meeting. Other people can just come, give their presentations, and leave. So I really think the board should consider on maybe not going to a consent agenda, and I think the board should consider uh, accepting questions and comments about things that don't pertain to the agenda at the beginning of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the board on anything relative to agenda items? If not, we'll close that again. There's an opportunity at the end of the meeting to address the board regarding any issue. So thank you. Okay, so then uh, we have minutes from our regular board meeting of March 12th. Could we bring that to the floor for consideration? Second. Uh, First, I can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought something was going to happen. You're getting ahead of yourself. I'm sorry, but I, I thought that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Probably, probably did, I just didn't hear or see it. So, <laughs> was there a okay. second? <laughs> so, Mr. Jambrone, yeah, I move that. <laughs> well, good practice as we move through our agenda. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay, so, um, okay, any additions, corrections at all relative to uh, the minutes from that meeting? Hearing none, then, all those in favor signify by saying yes. Aye. 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 I apologize. Thank you. Yes, absolutely, sir. Yes, so uh, first up is mm -hmm. Mr. Paschke relative to uh, Ms. Lavelle. So it's my honor to present Ms. Lavelle, who's going to be presenting on her summer study. So very exciting. As you all know, our, our art department is, is very uh, well celebrated and awarded at our, at our school. Both of our art teachers have been selected to be the art, te art teacher of the year for New York State in our section. So we, we have phenomenal teachers and phenomenal kids. I can't wait to see what they're going to be presenting tonight. Thank you. So I'm just going to share some of the lessons that I did um, for my trip to Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, there's four of them there. I'm just going to move on though because I'm going to tell you all about them as we go through. So one of the lessons I did was on the Kentucky Derby. I actually got to tour the um, facilities but all the horses were in Saratoga at the time. So <laughs> it was kind of ironic that me coming from New York and up still not seeing the horses. But um, I actually wasn't going to see the horses, I was going to see the, um, the silks, which is what the jockeys wear. So the students actually got to hear all about why the silks were made originally. Oh, sorry. Um, and each one is completely different. They're never repeated. And they learned all about colors and um, the color meanings and um, symbolism behind them. And the whole idea is that so that when you're looking at the jockey's way over there, you can tell which one you are rooting for. So with um, that, our students designed graduation gowns for college. <laughs> Not here. So... <laughs> <laughs> Um, for, for college, so that when you're in with thousands of people, how would you be able to tell you from everybody else so that your parents could see 
you, your friends and family and everything. So um, after each project, they put their, um, their artwork on Arxonia and they tell all about it. So you can see there that um, this student, and I should have worn my glasses because I can't actually read it, but um, that the blue represents past sadness in their life and green represents the harmony and red represents the excitement and gold represents the beauty that they feel. So they combined all of that with symbolism and that's the one on the far left. So another place I visited was Fort Donaldson, which is a national park. Um, it actually is where the Union overtook the Confederate um, armies. Uh, I got to play battle there with my husband, you know, just <laughs> shooting the cannons and everything, but I took a ton of pictures of the cemeteries, of the buildings, and they're all from that period. And then the students actually picked from those pictures, learned about everything that went on, and then we did mono prints. So there's a couple down there. Um, and then you know, the street art of Nashville. Um, this is actually Kelsey Montague's um, work, and um, she goes from city to city creating these wings that have things related to that city. And then she invites people to stand in front of them and take pictures and hashtag uh, what lifts me. So you're also supposed to add what lifts you in there. So that's me next to some of the wings. But the students actually, we had done that project already. So she had this other, um, she had this other thing on her website where it was all about social media and what responsibility we have within that when we're hashtagging and everything else. So, um, and then the, the idea of collaborating to build something. So all of our students in the art department, there was over 120 that created a bird related to what lifts them, and then they all had to decide how to arrange it on our lockers. So, um, with that, Nashville is the largest city, or the, the most amount of street art in the city. But Buffalo is trying to do that. So, um, the Chantel Martin one is the line one down there. So my students actually got to take a field trip and we went to the Freedom Wall, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, Chantel Williams was actually the same artist in both, done a mural in both cities. So that was kind of fun. We talked about all of that. But the idea of um, the different murals <coughs> in the different cities usually celebrate the history of that city. So uh, our students, this is one of the works, actually um, created, or well, they had gone to the Freedom Wall. There's 28 uh, civil rights leaders. 13 of them were local and the rest were national. And they did a scavenger hunt learning all about those um, activists. But, okay, breathe. Sorry, I'm trying to talk fast. You don't need to listen to me for too long. <laughs> so anyways, our students actually then came back and um, researched activists of their generation and then created portraits of them and then created the write-ups and they were all over our lockers. Um, we did them on cardboard because the Freedom Wall is actually done on corrugated concrete. So I wanted something to kind of simulate the same <coughs> texture. So These two were actually local So I think this is the last one I'm showing you. I have a ton of lessons I've done, and I have a ton in my head for next year's that I'm so very excited about. But um, the Mammoth Cave one, uh, I actually got to spend four hours underground hiking exactly 0.4 miles. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. And probably the hardest hike I had ever taken, and I'm a hiker, so. Um, and just so interesting and so full of history. Um, the very first tours were in 1816, 
And the people that were going down there were using candlelight and signing their names in the roof of the cave. The cave itself is over 400 miles. It's still not all um, explored. And there's only a, a sh little bit of it that the public is actually allowed to go into because originally the gypsum flower, which is that corner down there, was all over the walls, but everybody was going in and taking them down, thinking they were going to be souvenirs, but they just crush. So it ruined, and it takes 200 years to grow a flower. So that is one of the flowers that were still there. So my students actually compared what my pictures from underground with the artist um, Carol Nelson and talks about how we can perceive our environment in different ways and how we can actually ex you know, express ourselves through that. So these are from my pictures and their creations. Mm -hmm. I just really wanted to thank you for the opportunity, and like I said, I have so much more that I'm doing with it, so thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lavelle, thanks so much. It's not too personal, so what did you identify as lifting you relative to the wings of national? I didn't hashtag. <laughs> I, don't, I actually don't know how to hashtag, which is really bad. But, but what lift, lifted me was just having that experience, truthfully, and seeing all of the art. Like, I didn't even give you a glimpse of what I had seen. And um, I actually want to um, do a lesson related to the American Reed posters versus the National um, um, Parks posters. So there's just, it was, it was perfect. It was a perfect trip. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Ms. Farrell, and your guest. I don't have a presentation. I just wanted to give you some information. I'm really, I, this will probably be fairly brief. I wanted the board to meet Susan Hennis, who's over here. Thank you for moving her to the uh, beginning. She came to Fredo, and she's been here from yesterday and all of today um, from New Jersey by way of Lake Tahoe, if I'm remembering all yeah, this correctly. Right so, <laughs> so yeah, Susan travels all over, and she's actually leaving tonight to head to her next <coughs> visit in Salamanca. So, so she has been in our district for the last two days doing some classroom visitations and um, debriefings with teachers, our special ed teachers. So just for board information, right now in the district there are 172 school-age special ed students. Um, 157 of those students are here in this building, the elementary, middle, and high school. And of those 157 students, 83% um, of them receive specially designed instruction in general ed, meaning they are either in a consultant teaching classroom or an integrated co-taught classroom. That's their primary service. Um, so just, you know, bear that in mind and, you know, as a district, as administrators during some of our uh, in-service days, we've really been talking a lot about improving instructional strategies and meeting the needs of all of our learners, tier one strategies. Um, so, and again, I'll just go back to the 83% of our special ed students um, are in gen ed, pair, in a situation that pairs two teachers together to provide instruction. So, um, we've been doing that for a lot of years, but I, I guess, you know, it kind of became evident to me that I really needed to help special ed teachers develop um, some new strategies. So I, I, I don't want to say better, but improve the, that co-teaching or consultant model. Um, so in October, um, on our first in-service day, um, after the school year started, Susan did come and do a full day. Um, professional development with about 50 teachers right here in this library. Um, and that was, the thrust of that was really to talk about co-teaching strategies, and that was a really successful day. Um, I think everybody that was in this room really got a lot out of that professional development day, but it, you know, it was a shot in the arm, and what we realized too was that we needed to kind of continue um, in the you know, continue our drive to, you know, have her come back, help our teachers really work on some instructional strategies. So 
as I said, for the last two days she's been here, she's um, worked, I, don't, I didn't do a count of how many different classrooms she visited, but she visited classrooms that have integrated co-teaching or consultant teaching at each building level. She observed those teachers, took some notes, debriefed with all of them afterwards, and is really providing um, coaching for those teachers. And, you know, kind of sent out a letter that said, you know, I see, view me as your cheerleader. I'm here to really kind of help support you and, and move you on um, into some better levels of instruction. So it's my intention to really continue our relationship with Susan to come into the district and do some consultation with us. Um, Mr. Rada and I will be working on really kind of continuing our venture through our, some of our uh, future professional development days. So that being said, I really wanted you to meet Susan. Um, I'm sure she has a few things she'd like to say to, um, to the board. Yes, um, thank you for the opportunity, um, Kristen. It just worked out that I was here on a board night. Um, I do have the honor, I'm blessed, I get to travel across the country and really I'm passionate about inclusive practices. I was a co-teacher for a really long time and um, I've also done the other um, continuum of services and understanding that student achievement is significantly growing in classes that are co-taught. However, including students in a general education classroom is not enough to be included without the support and support of two teachers looking at instructional strategies. Um, I had quite an eye-opening experience the last two days at the elementary, middle, and high school. Um, the most exciting part of me being in the classrooms is probably the debriefing and coaching with teachers. Your teachers are open to suggestions. Um, they're understanding that the instructional strategies and specially designed instruction has to be in place for this to be really successful. And we had great conversations with your team yesterday on differentiation. And what does that look like? What does that look like in any classroom? And I, I feel like so many more strategies can be integrated by every teacher, um, campus-wide, school-wide, district-wide, um, because that's what's best for all learners. I think the biggest piece of my observations in the last two days is that your teachers are willing to be open to suggestions and I, I thank Kristen and Joe, because we've been working a lot in the last um, few months determining like what is our best step forward and how do we help these teachers and be supportive because we're there for student achievement. And so um, I will provide you each with a card if you go to my website. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the five approaches to co-teaching. It is not two teachers in front of 28 students, or how, your class sizes are nice and small. Um, um, but it is two teachers sharing instructional responsibility for all students in the classroom and sharing their expertise. And so it's not a special education teacher coming in and taking their students to a table and being a class within a class. It's both of us taking ownership of all students. All students are general education students first. And I think that is the biggest piece of co-teaching and the inclusive practice. And so thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself to you. And I will offer each of you a card. And if you have any questions or would like more information about co-teaching or what other things that can be done to support your students, I'm more than happy to be a resource to you. So thank you. And I just, I would like to add, Susan's been very accessible since we started to work together by email her. She gets back to me. We've talked on the phone and done some uh, video conferencing a number of times. So, and I know she's already emailing some of our teachers as well. Yes, so I've received I seven that. emails already today from teachers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? I'll, have a, I'll put a few back there in case anyone else in the audience would like information. Thanks, Ms. Hens. Thanks, Ms. Brown. Yes, Appreciate it. Okay. Then that takes us to Roman numeral 5, Financial Treasures Report, and that is uh, the <laughs> status report for February. <coughs> Mr. Forbes, uh, anything with regard to that that you'd like to highlight? Oh, nothing on that. Does anybody have any questions about the budget status report for February? He 
these are uh, different reports. I'm trying to get used to them. The um, last line, last number, uh, the seven seven six six seven two three eight. Um, that is what we have left to spend out of the budget. Correct. Okay. Um, and and if we look at that, do we expect to spend all of it. Uh, not all of it, but a lot of it. So do we have a, a figure of about how much? We're probably talking uh, about six nine, six eight million. So we're going to have a six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand potential yes. of excess just on the expense side. Potential, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions <coughs> from Mr. Forbes with regard to the budget status? <coughs> Then uh, revenue status report, um, Mr. Forbes, anything you'd highlight there? Yeah, a couple things on this one. Um, about halfway down the page, we've got rental real properties that we received our January rent from Hosey's, uh, which is the bulk of that number. Two-thirds of the way down the page, we received 77000 of scheduled lottery aid and 197000 of scheduled Hosey's aid. And then finally, the last line, uh, district received $32,000 from the state, and what this was, was that in 2011, the state notified Mr. DeFonso that at some future point in time, the district was going to get additional excess cost data for the 2010-11 school year, and that happened in February, or February of 2019, so you can see their payment schedule there. <coughs> okay. Any questions for Mr. Forbes regarding that? Yeah, again, last number, last page, uh, 220000 of excess revenue uh, above and beyond what we're expecting. Um, that will carry forward through to the end of the year. Is that correct? Yes. Um, explanation on this one. In, for the revenue report, you need to consider both the anticipated balance column, which is a second to last, and the excess revenue column. And those two will be netted together at the end. Mm -hmm. what your actual is because in the anticipated column you may not get some of the things that are anticipated. And the excess column you may have some things such as uh, aid for St. Mary's School of the Deaf Students that will be transferred out at the end of the year. So that's mm -hmm. not as clear of a, a number at this point. But 200 is a good guess? Uh, probably 150. 150 plus the six, 700,000 of Expenses that are lower than oh, great. so we should carry forward nine hundred thousand. Right, so recognizing that you've also applied fund balance to this current year's budget, so you're essentially replacing that. Thank you. And not all of it. And just to just to check those numbers uh, that Mr. Aldridge. Put together, uh, I thought it was 600 plus 150, but am I missing something? If you picked up the full 220, then it'd be closer than that. So. But your best estimate is 150, not 220. Yep. Okay. At this point. Right, which would be 750. Just, yeah, I'm just trying to track it. Well, the, the unencumbered balance was 7.667 in East. Saying that it'll probably be about six nine six nine five seven six nine five, Mr. Ford. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else rel relative to the revenue status report? If not, then uh, we need to bring to the floor the treasurer's report for February. Can we bring that to the floor? Somewhere. Yeah, Ms. Gaggy Jackson, is there a second to that? Ms. Paul Fortna, and okay. Mr. Forbes, uh, relative to that, or Mr. Certicio, anything? No. Any questions at all regarding that? No. None? And all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? That's approved then? <coughs> okay. Then that takes us to uh, items for capital project 2017.
That is, um, we have a proposed resolution uh, to accept uh, testing services with the uh, Buffalo Construction Consultants and uh, and Chorus Group and AMD Environmental for Air Monitoring. Could we bring that to the floor for consideration? <coughs> Ms. Powell Fortna, and is there a second to that? Ms. Gagnachance? Any, anything, Mr. Forbes or Mr. Sorticio? No. No. Any questions at all? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Those are approved. Then, or that's approved. Then we have the additional equipment, uh, and that's uh, recommended by Mr. Forbes concerning security and safety. Could we bring that to the floor for consideration? Mr. Aldrich, and mm -hmm. is there a second to that? Uh, Mr. Jambron, and uh, any questions or comments? <coughs> Just to quickly point out, um, one of the oddities of New York State accounting laws is that you can transfer in and out of any code you want except for equipment. So when you get to a situation where we want to add additional radios and we haven't budgeted for it previously, it's necessary for the board to do a motion for health and safety, which then allows you to transfer into equipment. So that's what's going on here, so we can purchase more radios. And these are replacements of some that are no longer functioning, <coughs> and then some additional ones for credit. Okay. Any questions at all regarding that? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? That's approved. Then uh, that takes us to. Uh, Roman numeral uh, 7, A, 1, and that's the legal notice for 2019-2020 budget vote is presented. Could we bring that to the floor for consideration? So moved. And Ms. Gaggenschatz, and is there a second to that? Mr. Alter? <coughs> any questions or comments regarding that at all? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? The ads approved, then we have the resolution to approve petitions to be used for nomination of individuals to the Board of Education. Could we bring that to the floor for consideration? Mr. Aldrich, and is there a second to that? Second. Ms. Gagachance, any questions or comments regarding that? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed? <coughs> That's approved. Excellent. And then that takes us then to uh, draft two of our budget and Mr. Forbes. Last time we would be bringing a budget forward, a budget draft forward tonight that would include any additional staffing and would also be at the tax cap, and we have both of those things accomplished in this draft. So we'll just run through the slides, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, this draft does not have final employee benefits. We still have two <laughs> contracts that are under negotiation the CSEA and the Federal Ministry Association. Uh, we do not have in here yet the final BOCES cost, although I believe they're at this point pretty close. Um, we also do not have the state aid run files, which we're hoping that comes in from the state on time, which will make a difference for us as we move forward. <clears throat> and taking a look at salary benefits then, overall we're up 2.37%. Uh, the highlights here are the addition of the staff, which I'll get to in a minute, and also the benefits, which includes health insurance, um, we're up 1.87%. In this draft, we have retirements as listed. Um, replacement of each of those individuals and four were eligible for the district retirement center through the FTA contract. This is a new slide from last time where we've added the staffing requests that were presented by the middle school 
last meeting and also has a corresponding effect in the high school on a couple of overages. You see math, ELA, science, and then the social studies in Spanish also include a full-time teaching assistant at the middle school level. This is a breakdown of salary and benefits. Um, highlight on this page is health insurance at a negative 2.6%. You may recall that at the end of the last school year, we were able to transition over all the independent health members into our Blue Cross Blue Shield plan, which resulted in uh, quite a savings to the district. And you're seeing that reflected here, along with the fact that the Chautauqua County School District <coughs> plan had a relatively modest increase in their premiums this year as well. Equipment materials and supplies district-wide were down 34,000 or negative 3.65%. Contractual expense and BOCI services, a uh, big move here on BOCI services from where we've been. We were running in the mid-teens. Uh, we were able to pull back a couple of projected BOCI slots for special education and also alternative education. And we had the final numbers from BOCI's for occupational education. So all those things helped us to get down. Uh, next couple slides will show you that some of the major increases and decreases. The big move on this page, obviously, is the decrease in the 161, and the big up is obviously the increase in the 181. Uh, speech, occupational, physical therapy, those are all uh, uh, services that are provided to our special education students that will vary by student, and sometimes varies by month, so that tends to flow up and down. This page, uh, we've added two slots, potential slots at the P-TECH program, uh, which will take us up to four. Uh, we also have the capital project payment to BOCES, which is at less than it was last year, so that's a decrease of 119000 In the hardware software line, we've included the Raptor system, which is a building security system. Debt service interfund fund transfers, uh, this is our principal of interest. Um, big decrease, as we've talked about previously, because the Vision 2000 debt will be coming off the books, both on the expenditure side and the revenue side. And, um, Mr. Forbes, the inclusion of the Raptor uh, under BOCES, could you just explain that? I can 